In this next video, we're going to go over the uh, group exercise in Chapter 6, creating a corridor for Road 1. Uh, in the first step, it asks us to open up the plan underscore j2p0200.dgn. Uh, I've already done that in, in microstate or in Power Geopack. Uh, the next thing in step two, it wants us to create a corridors file. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over to Power Geopack. We'll do a file new. There's no wizard if you get that option there. Uh, first thing I normally do is come down and check my seed file. So I'm going to go out, grab my correct seed file under CAD standards, seed files, design English, and for a corridors file we're going to use an iProject 2D Power Geopack. And for the name here we're just going to call it corridors underscore G 2P0200 and we'll need to have the DGN file and what you typically do is you uh, type it once and you copy it down to the file name area. We want to store this in data 6 because we're in chapter 6 and all we need to do is hit OK to that. Okay, It's just a blank file. If I hit fit view there nothing shows up but we're going to reference it in our terrain and our civil geometry. So I'm going to go up to my uh, reference dialog, I'm going to do a tools attach. I'm going to go down to where our files are located under district CAD, design, Randolph, J2P0200, data 6, and I'm going to select the civil geometry and I'm going to select the terrain model existing. Okay. Once those are referenced, in, I'm going to hit a bit view. In the uh, Step number four, it wants us to activate the terrain model, and the way you do that is you come in and you select the terrain model and you go to the second icon, which is set as active terrain model. We're going to go ahead and create a new template or create or copy or, or or you could create a new template to apply to the corridor. We're going to, again, we're working on uh, corridor road one here. And so I'm going to go over to task. I'm going to go down to corridor modeling. I'm going to go into the create template tool, which is located on the first row. And it's the second last icon. I'm going to open that up. And you'll notice that my ITL is pointing out under the T drive to the MoDOT ITL. Uh, that's not the correct ITL. I need to open up my project ITL. So I'm going to do a file open. I'm going to again go out to my location of district CAD, design, Randolph. J2P0200, data 6, and in there there should be an ITL. And you can see we do have a road 1 folder, and so what we're going to do is we're going to copy some other templates in there and use those other templates. And so we're going to go up to the, um, we're actually going to go to the template section of the MoDOT library, and we're going to uh, expand down. Uh, the concrete pavement with shoulders. So I'm going to go to concrete pavement with shoulders. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go uh, into the A2 shoulders ag base folder. This one here. And the uh, template that we're going to use is the concrete two, two lane concrete pavement two lane with ag base option three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy that. So I'm going to make sure I get the right one. There's the option three. I'm going to copy it from my MoDOT section of the library. I'm going to go up to road one. I'm going to paste it in there. Okay. And then we're going to also copy another uh, uh, template on up. It's going to be, um, we're going to expand the concrete with curb and gutter folder. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. There's the concrete pavement with curb and gutter. And we're going to uh, copy the two lane type A curb and gutter with ag base. And so we're going to come down, it's this one here, two lane type A curb and gutter with ag base. We're going to copy that one. And again, we're going to place it up in the road one folder. Okay. Once the uh, two lane type A curb and gutter is pasted in the road one folder, we're going to modify the gutter flow points. And so we're going to go ahead and put that uh, template in our active editing window over here. So we're going to double click on it. And we're going to edit this point here and we're going to 
uh, edit this point here, or at least take a look at it. And so we're going to do the right one first. So we're going to zoom in on the right side. We're going to take a look at this. And uh, that point um, is based on a vector offset. And the ve first parent point of the vector offset is this point here. And then it chooses one of these other points as uh, the point to follow. And, and they're all based off of a super elevation. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to simplify this a lot. We're, we're not going to... Uh, actually uh, use these other points and not use a vector offset but we're going to use an actually we're going to use a slope and the slope value that we're going to use is just the 7.41 percent uh, again it's the parent it's sloping down from this pair of point up here at that percent slope and we're just going to leave it at that slope and what we're going to do later on is we're going to modify that slope using a parametric constraint uh, and we're going to do that in, in an area where we're transitioning from a curve and gutter section to a, a section of roadway that just has a shoulder. So that's all we need to do here. We're going to hit apply to that and close. We're going to do the same thing over on this side. We're going to click in there. We're going to change it to slope. Okay. Now the other thing that we're going to do though, um, and we're going to do it in this one, then we'll go back and do it on the right one, is we want to pair, put a label in this field. And the label that we want to put in there is uh, a label that will kind of reflect uh, what it's controlling and we're going to control the slope. So on this one, since we're on the left side, I'm going to call it left underscore gutter underscore slope. Okay, And so I'm going to use that label later on in a parametric constraint uh, to control that slope over a distance. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to that. I'm going to go back over to the right point and add in the same thing. But this time it's going to be a right underscore gutter slope. And so I'm going to hit apply to that as well. Okay. All right, we're moving on. We're all the way down past 18 already. And at 19, it just says us, it has us to review the two templates. So you can kind of see this one here. It's got uh, a little bit of a curb and gutter with a kind of a berm and then a either a fill or a ditch slope and then the other template that we're going to be using in the road one is just a simple pavement with uh, asphalt um, or simple asphalt pavement um, actually that is a if I look at it that is a concrete pavement with an asphalt shoulder and the reason I can tell that's a concrete pavement is because it's straight vertically down and if I expand in you can see that the slope doesn't change it stays vertical Whereas on my asphalt shoulder, it goes to a, uh, it's actually a 45 degree angle there. So, and you can, you can exa exaggerate uh, the scale here. I'm doing it with my control key. I'm just holding my control key down and using my scroll, or you can do that vertically as well. So uh, just be aware that you can, you can um, uh, distort the scale on, on this view, but the actual components are still drawn to whatever value you have in uh, the point constraint. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a fit view, and that's what yours should look like as well when you do a fit view. Okay, so we're going to save these settings, and uh, you could do a file save if you want, or if you just hit close, it'll prompt you always if you made a change whether or not you want to save it, and we're going to say yes to that. We're going to go back to our Power Geopack, and we're ready to go ahead and create a corridor for Road 1. So to do that, we're going to go over to Task, Civil Tools, slide down the corridor modeling and the first icon in the upper left hand corner is the create corridor icon so we're going to go ahead and click on that and uh, it comes out with this dialog here it's going to ask you to locate the corridor baseline so I'm going to go ahead and click on road 1 and road 1 has an active profile uh, which is called road 1 PR so I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click uh, uh, or reset for the active profile which is just a right click you can give it a corridor name. I'm going to call it Road 1. Once that's set, go ahead and accept that. And it'll put the corridor uh, lines in there for you. That's what these green lines are. And now it's asking for a template that you uh, would like to apply to that. And so uh, you could come over and hit the dots here. Uh, you can also hit the Alt and then the down arrow key to open up the um, the dialog that lets you select what template you want to use. And so you can see that we're in our uh, 
our project ITL, the J2P0200 ITL. We're going to slide down to the J2P0200 folder. I'm going to go into Road 1 and the template that I'm going to select first off is that curb and gutter one. So we're going to select curb and gutter. That gives you a preview over here in the window. We're going to select OK to that. And then all you have to do is accept it out on your cursor here. The left click. Now it's going to ask you where you want to uh, apply this template. And we're going to apply it from the beginning of the of the roadway down to a station called uh, down to a station 25 plus 30. And so if you're starting at the beginning, you can hit the Alt key to lock it in. And then the end key I'm, uh, for the end station, I'm going to just type in 25 plus 30. I'm going to hit enter. You can see the uh, where it's being located right there, and I'm just going to accept that location. The drop interval, and then that's going to be uh, on, let's see here, what step that is specified in the drop interval. Uh, that's going to be down at step 31, and we're going to do a, a five foot drop interval. So we're going to type in five there. We're going to accept that. Minimum transition before, we're going to say zero and zero for both those. And if you wanted to, you could give it a description, but I'm just going to leave it blank and accept that. And once I accept the description, it, go ahead, it goes and adds in the uh, curb and gutter template to my Road 1 corridor. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to and, and add the second template drop. And you can see that the tool is just uh, waiting to place the next template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick the right template for this. So I'm going to hit the Alt down arrow again. And this time I'm going to pick the concrete pavement with asphalt or ag base and uh, option three. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to accept it on the screen. It's going to ask where I want to place this. I'm going to type in 25 plus 30 again for the start. And for the end, you could hit the Alt key to lock into the Alt. And then all you have to do is add, tell it what drop interval. Again, we're going to go five. Minimum transition before drop, we'll say zero and zero for both those. And again, I'm going to leave the description blank. So once you left click on that, it'll go ahead and add in that template for the remaining part of our corridor. Once that's done, you can hit F4 to flush out the tools and go back to the element selection tool. And uh, if you want, uh, it says in step number 40 to plus, press the F6 key. And what the F6 key will do is it'll open up a uh, leave, it'll leave the 2D view on the left, but then open up a 3D view of your uh, corridor. So we're going to hit F6. And you can see the 3D model over here. Now, uh, when it opens up for the very first time, that model appears very dark. And so what you need to do is come over to this window, make it active, and then come up to the brightness and set the brightness all the way uh, to the right and then the model looks a, little, a lot better. And so you can see the model, if you zoom in close, you can kind of see that the uh, there's uh, materials applied to our components out there. The grass looks like grass, the, the base looks like aggregate. Uh, again, the way, the trick to rotating the view in this, in this view here is you click on the ro view rotation, and if you're in the dynamic method, you take this little crosshair and you AccuSnap it to some element in, there, in, in the drawing. And once you do that, you can rotate about that point. Okay. Another area that we're going to look at is we're going to look at down by station 25 plus 30. I'm just going to kind of keep moving my crosshair in down there, but you can see that we got a transition issue here, and I'm going to move this down a little bit further. You can see we go from curb and gutter uh, to a shoulder and we've got some issues here they're not lining up real well and so what we'll do in a later chapter after super elevation we're going to show you how to transition uh, from from a curb and gutter section to a shoulder section and then also fix the fill slope to match as well so, so that'll be down in chapter 8 uh, we'll be doing that for road 1. Okay the only other thing we're going to talk about here is uh, design stages Right now we're in a preliminary design stage and the reason I know that is because I have a green grip here on my corridor. And these are corridor grips and uh, you can get uh, tools that are based on this corridor if by just clicking on those grips. Uh, you've got properties, you've got uh, corridor views, uh, corridor reports, corridor references, 
corridor creation tools, which we'll get into later on. Uh, you can reprocess the corridor if you make a change and it doesn't process. You can force the process right here. You can lock a corridor. Uh, you can zoom to a corridor and you can delete a corridor. And so uh, the design stage, if you're not 100% sure what design stage you are, just click on your corridor grips and you can go to the very first icon, which is properties, and in there it'll have the design stage. And so what this is, is it's a preliminary design stage and you can see it's got a, a 10 value here. And so what it's doing is it's taking my template drops that were every 5 feet and multiplying them by 10. And so uh, when you're in the preliminary stage of this design, you'll want that set to uh, preliminary because it processes much quicker when it, when it does fewer uh, template drops. And so I can come in here and say I was getting close to the end of my project. I can switch this to a final, which is uh, going to take that, uh, those template drops I drop every five feet and multiply them by a final which is one so if I come back into my template grip here you can see the final is a times one and so you can see that we have a very fine uh, model here because it's dropping templates uh, every five feet and not being multiplied by uh, some factor it is it's being multiplied by one so it's again every one foot now one thing you gotta be aware and I'm gonna switch it back to the preliminary is that even though uh, we're having template drops in this preliminary stage of every uh, 5 times 10 which is every 50 feet you'll notice that there are some template drops that are closer and what this is is these are critical critical sections uh, and it will automatically uh, based on those design stage it will drop uh, template drops at critical locations and critical locations are, are things like horizontally uh, PC of curves, PT of curves, vertically uh, any, anywhere there's a VPI or a VPC or VPT and uh, it can also do template drops on things called uh, external locations. For example an external location uh, would be uh, say you have a retaining wall uh, out past your your shoulder and where that retaining wall starts it will drop a template drop at that location just to, to get the model more accurate so those come in automatically uh, in, in a lot of our design stages and they again they're critical and external locations that can be added automatically based on your design stage and so if we look at the design stage options again just to kind of go over this we've got a preliminary we have a preliminary without the critical points we have a final, we have a final without the critical points, and then we've got some other ones called meshes and stuff like that. And a mesh is kind of a new surface uh, that they've created that kind of represents your model, and uh, uh, a mesh uh, can be extracted, and you can you can create a terrain model from from a mesh. It's just basically microstation elements that represent uh, your surface. So. And then we've got some other design stages down here called linear features, and so it'll just draw your linear features only, and then uh, final components only, and it'll only draw the components. And so if you want to see what these look like, so if I switch it to a, a five mesh, if we look over uh, on the screen, you'll see that uh, what a mesh looks like, kind of like so there. If we switch it to an another design stage, let's say uh, linear features it'll only show you the linear features in this view over here to the right you can see all these linear features these are all the edge edges of shoulder for the asphalt pavement that's why there's several of them and then the last one I think there was one more we were going to talk about here uh, final components only so if we use that design stage you'll see what the components look like here all right so mainly what you're going to be working in most of the time is either preliminary or final so I'm just going to switch it back to preliminary because we're still at the beginning stages we haven't even applied super elevation but uh, those two design stages will probably be the most uh, commonly commonly used ones uh, will be the again final and preliminary all right let's see what else we got to cover um, 
we've got uh, again those uh, tools in the corridor grip here we can do something called a corridor view and in here if you uh, it'll list all the views that you can have and this is kind of similar to the profile view that you can open up a cross-section view of of this corridor and so if I select uh, open cross-section model it's going to tell me to open up a view so I'm going to go to view 8 and then I just need to select in that view to let it know what view I'm, I'm wanting and you can actually see the cross-section view in here and you can use these scroll bars uh, you can also go to the pull down and actually type in a, a, a station 25 plus 00, zero. and sometimes it doesn't want to take it if I move my cursor out of there too quickly so it, it, typically you want to you know if it's an even station you can type an even station in but this is great for typing in oddball stations like say 25 plus 25 you'll create that template drop at that location and then draw you uh, what that section looks like uh, the other thing you can do in this view is you can come in here and you can right click and you can place a temporary dimension line so if you're wanting to see what your cross section is doing you can place those so I'll go ahead and place another one This also works with slopes as well. And that temporary dimension line will stay out there until, um, until uh, you reset it. And so now to get rid of those temporary dimension lines, right now I'm still, I still want to place more lines. I'm going to reset. I'm going to just right click in here and you can go do a remove all temporary dimension lines. Okay. The other thing you can do, um, uh, you can do a locate via station data point. So instead of having to navigate down using this tool or typing in a station value, um, you could just come in here, right click, locate station via data point, come over to your plan view and just pick a location and you'll create that cross section view at that data point. Something they added new to the 878 code, and, um, uh, and a lot of you may not have that code just yet. If you're not for sure, you can just come to the help and go to About Power Geopack. But if you have a code uh, 878 or 872 or greater, um, you can have this functionality, and it's called Delete Cross Section, Delete Dynamic Cross Section View. And sometimes this cross section view gets stuck and you, there's just no way uh, to get it reset and that's what they've added is some functionality to come in here and delete the dynamic cross-section view and what that does is it just basically resets that view and you can just hit yes to this and so that uh, cross-section view it closes down and if I open it back up there's nothing in there but all you have to do is to create that cross-section view again just come into your corridor grip go to the second icon and then click in that view there Okay. Again, if, if your cross-section view is just not working the way you think it should, it's acting funny, it's not reflecting what your corridor is doing, try that. Uh, come in here and do a delete dynamic cross-section view. Okay. All right, uh, the functionality of distorting your view works in this view as well. Again, uh, if you hold your control key down, you can kind of shift it horizontally and horizontally. If you do it with the shift key, it gets deeper, like so. So just be aware of that functionality again. Again, uh, it can be distorted, but again, it's truly drawing the cross-section to the depth uh, that you, dis that you um, indicated in your, in your template library. Okay, the other, uh, some other tools that we're going to look at, if we go back to this view number one, we're going to go back to the corridor grip. Um, you got something called corridor reports, and in there you've got one called corridor component quantities. If we click on that, it'll actually give you the quantities of your corridor. And uh, if you wanted to, you can put in some unit costs, and it will uh, update this total cost here. If you wanted to, you could actually create a report from this. If you click on report, and it creates this report here. Um, again. 
these values that you have in here, this, the settings can be adjusted. If you go to tools, format options, you can change uh, the settings in here. The other thing that you can do, which is cool, is you can actually export this to an, uh, you can export it to a uh, Excel file. So if I right click and export to Microsoft Excel, uh, it'll export that on out. Now, if you don't have Excel installed on your machine, uh, that option won't be there. But uh, so we're kind of waiting for it to open up here. It's still exporting out. And you can see there's the Excel uh, file there. So it's just a real quick and easy way to get it into Excel. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close that report down. And close that down. Some other tools in here. Let's take a look and see what else we got in there. Uh, we've got uh, design input report. You can create an input report, uh, results report, and then you can also do a milling report if you had uh, milling on your job. The corridor creation tools, uh, the one that, that's kind of useful is this bucket and this will basically summarize uh, all the uh, settings of your corridor. Right now it's showing you where the template drops are at. If you wanted to you could adjust the values in here and they would reflect in your template, in your corridor. Uh, it shows you any secondary alignments, key stations, uh, parametric constraints, point controls which we'll, all, we'll get into all those a little bit later on, curve widening in condition exceptions, external references, and clipping references. And again, we'll get into all those a little bit later. But if we did apply any of those to this corridor, they would be listed in here and you could uh, manipulate them in here. Okay. And so if we go back again to the heads up tools here, uh, we have something called corridor references. And we'll get into those a little bit later on where you can add a corridor reference or a clipping reference. Um, again, back at the uh, corridor creation tools. Here's all the other tools for doing key stations and point controls and parametric constraints. Again, we'll, we'll talk about those in a little bit in, in later chapters. You can lock your rules of your corridor, lock it down so it doesn't process. Uh, you can zoom to and then you can also delete your corridor. Again, we'll get into a lot of those tools later on, so don't, don't, be, uh, don't be worried that we're not going to cover them. We will in later chapters. Okay. So I think that's all I have for this, uh, this exercise. Oh, one thing I want to go over one more time. We kind of talked about it earlier, but uh, when you're navigating through your section, if you look in your 2D view, you'll have a line coming across here, and that line represents the section that you're seeing in your cross-section view. Okay. So just be aware of that. That's what that line is there for. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a file save. I always like to do a file update server copy and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next exercise.